I bought three broken robot vacuums from eBay to see if I could fix them. So I'm gonna first see if they turn on and then I'll try and vacuum with them and see what the problems are. Thank you to Roborock for sponsoring this video. More on them in a minute. And here we go with Roomba number two. Let's see what happens. Roomba number two, I still have not found any problems with, so I'm gonna keep cleaning with that and see if we can figure that one out. So that was Roomba number three that we just heard. It's obviously got some sort of issues going on. We definitely have a problem with Roomba number one and Roomba number three. Let's get to number three and see if we can fix that one. So the first issue with number three is that this dust catcher doesn't have the filter that goes in here. So I've got another one of those ordered. I was testing it with one of the filters from one of the other vacuums, but we do need to take care of that issue before we can call this one fixed. So let's take a look underneath, because that's where the issue seemed to be. I don't think these should be that loose. This also is very loose right here. So that, I mean, that's definitely a problem. I think to get this out, we must need to remove these two screws and these two screws. I've not really repaired these before. I think I tried to fix one a long time ago, like seven years ago, but I don't even think I was successful with that. So I'm pretty new to these. So I'm just gonna be kind of guessing here and just going by whatever looks like might be the problem. So I think there is supposed to be movement here. I just feel like that's gotta be too much. I think this is normal right here, but there's also a spring over here for that part. I wonder if we're just missing a spring. I don't see anywhere a spring could go though. I'm gonna take apart one of the other ones and see if we're missing any parts in here. I feel like if we had a spring for this side, then it would work totally normally, but I also could be wrong since I haven't done this before. So this one is number two. We know this one is working and that's actually how it looks like it's supposed to work. Okay, that surprises me, but can't argue with that, I guess. So the other problem I see is that this one, there's a lot of play in each of these, and this one, there's basically none. So these, this one at least looks totally fine other than all the hair in it. Let's compare the rollers from number one to the rollers from number two that we know is working. So here are the two rollers from number two, which we know are good. Let's put them up to these rollers and we simply just have longer rollers in one than in the other. I wonder if that's because one is maybe a generic roller. One's the original, I don't know. This roller right here has a taper to it on this piece that connects. And this one is just straight and flat. So the reason this one sits in there better is because it's tapered. These are all the S9. And I wonder if this maybe is just for a different model or something, and that's why it's different. Or like I said, maybe it's just like a, a cheap third party one or something. I'm not really sure, but I don't like how much play is in this. So I'm going to get another one ordered and see if I can find one that's just like this with this tapered edge. Since I don't have new rollers for it to test though, I'm gonna take the rollers from number two, the vacuum that we know works, and install them into number three. Yeah, there's still a little bit of play there, but really not too bad at all. So let's try these rollers in number three and see if it makes that noise go away. Okay, and let's see what happens. There we go, that's what I'm talking about. So I think what happened with number three is somebody replaced the rollers with rollers that just aren't good enough. And that's why we were having those noises with number three. Since I can't find anything wrong with number two yet, let's take a look at number one. Before we do that though, I wanna tell you about today's sponsor, Roborock. With the Roborock S7, you can sweep and mop floors all with a single device. The Roborock S7 has sonic mopping, auto lifting mop, carpet detection, a child lock, hyperforce suction, and precision navigation. The Roborock S7 works with Amazon Alexa, Google Nest, and also Siri. This lets you command the Roborock with just your voice. Gone is the old bristled brush design, and now we have a rubber roller instead. The rubber roller is much more durable, its spiring blades agitate better, and it's even better at avoiding hair tangles. But by far my favorite feature is that the Roborock can sweep and mop at the same time. 
But by far the most important feature of the Roborock S7 is the sonic technology it uses to scrub floors up to 3,000 times per minute. This eliminates dried on stains that some robots may leave behind from coffee to muddy footprints and more. The intelligent mop lifts when the carpet is detected so you can mop hard floors and vacuum carpets all in a single clean. The S7 has pinpoint accurate LiDAR navigation that creates detailed maps of your home and is able to identify rooms across up to four levels. All you have to do is move it from another floor and push the cleaning button. The Roborock S7 has ultrasonic carpet recognition. Using ultrasonic sound, the S7 recognizes carpet with extraordinary accuracy. Roborock has a great app that you can choose exactly what you want the vacuum to do, and then the vacuum will go do its thing with no attention needed from you. If you would like to check out the Roborock series of vacuums, I'll put a link right in the description that'll take you right there. Now let's take a look at number one and see if we can figure out what's going on. Now when I got this, it came with a note on it that said error 31. Also in the description of the eBay listing, it said that it had error 31. When I started it up, it didn't show me error 31, but it did give me a sensor error. So I think probably what's going on with this one is there's some sort of issue with the sensors around this bar. So we got to figure out how to get to those. Also, just looking at it, this one has got a really messed up roller. So we're going to need another roller for sure. So I'm guessing in order to get to the sensors under here, we need to remove this piece and probably some other stuff. Don't know what that other stuff is going to be yet, though. So here we've got the battery. You got the blower motor down here. Okay, those just pop right out. That's pretty cool. So the wheels are just connected with this little circuit board right here, and they connect right down there. So we can just pull those out. I love that. There's a little tab underneath here. And we push in, they'll just come right out. So after removing a series of clips that go all around this cover <laughs> and removing the top piece, and then all around the bottom as well on this cover. Then we can remove the cover. Okay, we got a connector there. So we have this connector right here. I'm gonna pull gently back and forth, very gently. Okay, and that removes that. Now we can really get a look inside this thing. So I think next I need to remove these silver screws here so I can get this plate off. So with that up, I can see we're definitely getting closer. There's still a few things we need to take off and I'm not actually sure what. I think maybe this little piece right here and this little piece right here, there's a screw that goes in there kind of toward the side. So I think that needs to come out, but I'm not sure what else. So we have it off. There's just one wire connector down there that's got to come off and it's just kind of very awkward in there. I'm not sure how to get that thing off. So it's this connector right down here. There's like epoxy on top of it. I guess they don't want that one coming off or something. So after looking at it a little bit more, I don't think I actually need to remove this whole thing or these connectors. And I, I don't really want to because they're very difficult to remove without pulling on the wires. I don't really want to pull on the wires to remove them. So I think I might be able to leave them on here because this sensor, this sensor, there's a sensor over here and I think one right down here. Those are the main sensors that we need to look at and the magnets that correspond to those sensors. So this is the magnet I was talking about. There is a sensor right there that corresponds with this magnet. So when that sensor comes close to the magnet, the sensor senses the magnet and that's how the vacuum knows when it's bumped into something. So I'm gonna look at these magnets and just give them a good cleaning and then we'll take a look at the sensors themselves. And those are a little dirty, not too bad though. So here we have the little circuit board that corresponds to the magnet on the side of the vacuum. This little component right here is called a Hall effect sensor. And this sensor works by sensing changes in voltage when it comes in contact with a magnet or comes near to a magnet. So when the vacuum hits something, it pushes on the bumper like this, which moves this Hall effect sensor closer to the magnet that tells the vacuum that it has bumped into something. So this pin out shows pin number three is ground, pin number two is the output voltage, and pin number one is the voltage in. So VCC basically stands for the power supply to the component, and it is designated by this little dot right here. So the way I'm gonna test this is I'm gonna hook my meter to ground, I'm gonna input voltage in through pin one, and then we'll see what the voltage on the number two output pin is, 
before we put a magnet under it and then after we put a magnet under it. Unfortunately, in this particular circuit, I don't know how much the voltage should change by. So this test basically only tests if it's working at all or not. So we have zero volts output right now. When I inject voltage, we have one volt output, 0.785 volts with the magnet underneath. So that shows me that this Hall effect sensor is working. I'm gonna go through and test the others and see if I find any problems. One volt. 0.678, so that one is clearly working. 1.1 volt with a magnet and one volt without a magnet. So this Hall effect sensor on this board is reading the opposite of the others and I'm not sure if that's normal or not. I think what I'm gonna do is remove the bumper from the other vacuum that is totally working, install it onto this one, and then we'll see if it works. So I actually need to take this other vacuum apart anyway because there's something loose in there. So even though I, it's kind of a bummer I have to take this one apart since it is working fine, it also has something rattling around in there. Plus we need to test this bumper on the other one. So let's get this apart and see if we can figure out what's rattling around in there and if this bumper will fix the other one. And as far as I can tell, this little piece right here is what was rattling around. I think this goes down here to secure these wires. I could be wrong though. So we will now inject voltage onto the pin that's supposed to have voltage. Don't remember what number it is, but I do remember it's the one with the dot. And I'm blocking the meter reading, but I don't know, I can't really do it without doing that. Okay, here we go. 1.4 with the magnet attached and one volt with the magnet not attached. So that is similar to the other reading we got. Even though it's a much higher reading, the reading on the other vacuum was 1.1, I believe. And this is 1.4, so this shows that when I put the magnet underneath, the voltage goes up instead of the other ones where the voltage goes down. So theoretically that shows that the sensor is probably working normally on the other vacuum. And now with the bumper on, I can get the rest of it back together enough to test and hopefully this one will work. Here we go, little guy. Um, why is it moving backwards? That's not good. Tap the bumper to unstick, then press clean. Tap the bumper to unstick, then press clean. Let's try doing a hard reset on the vacuum. And what do you think, is it gonna work? Let's find out. See the app for help. <laughs> oh, that's not error very good news. 31. Oh, back to error 31. Well, I guess that's that. The front bumper definitely didn't fix it. So next I'm gonna try replacing the main board and let's see if that'll fix it. And here is the known good board from the other vacuum. So let's install this and hopefully this will fix it. Okay, there we go. Now we just need to get this the rest of the way back together enough to test once again, and then we'll see if the replacing the motherboard will fix it. Okay, show us what you got, little vacuum. Clean. Ugh. Error 31. Ah, bummer. At this point with this robot, I'm just really not sure what else to try. We've tried replacing the entire front bumper bar. We've tried replacing the wheels. We've tried replacing the motherboard with a board that we know for sure is good. I'm not sure what else could be causing a problem with this thing. Either way, I think I have to call this one not fixable, at least for now. If you have any ideas that might get this thing working, put them down in the comments. Even though we weren't able to get this one working, we still did fix two out of the three. I mean, one of them just had something rolling around in it, but we got it out and it's not rolling around anymore. So I still call that a fix. Be sure to go to my link in the description to check out Roborock. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a good one.